Welcome back to Caseology, and if you're new here, welcome. My name is Kaylin, and today I'm going to be doing your March 2021 horoscope. I recommend watching the horoscope for your ascendant sign first and foremost, because it will be the most overall accurate horoscope for you. But of course, feel free to watch for your sun and moon horoscopes as well. I've just posted my tarot predictions for March 2021, so I'll leave a link in the description box below that is a pick a card tarot reading. If you're interested in seeing my monthly horoscopes or my monthly tarot readings, please subscribe to Caseology as those go up at the end of each month for the following month. And lastly, guys, I do do private readings for astrology and tarot. These are via video call. So if you want to connect with me, I'll leave a link in the description box, but you can find that at caseology.com. Without further ado, let's dive straight into the March horoscopes. Hi Scorpio, Sun, Moon and Risings. Welcome to your March 2021 horoscope. The month starts off with your ruling planet Mars entering the sign of Gemini on the 4th of March. Mars will be transiting your 8th house for 7 weeks, which means you'll be putting a lot of personal energy and effort into one or more of the following areas. Your mutual resources, so you could be working with your business partner or with your significant other to sort those out. You may be having to put your personal attention towards inheritance that you are expecting or even drawing up a, a will with your partner. On a different level, you may be having to sort out matters regarding to child support and alimony. And some of you may be seeing a psychologist over the next seven weeks and working on any kind of repressed psychological trauma that you may have experienced. Or perhaps you and your partner are seeing a psychologist together. On a different note, some of you may be undergoing some kind of procedure or surgery during this seven week stint. And lastly, you will actually be feeling a lot more like yourself over the next seven weeks. And the reason for that is that Mars is the natural ruler of the eighth house and Scorpio is naturally associated with the eighth house anyway. Now on the 7th of March, the post shadow period for Mercury in retrograde will finally be over, which means that the dust will have settled with regard to any kind of buying or selling of property that you may be involved with, or perhaps you're simply leaving one rental property that you're in and moving to another. On a different level, and this is more with your family dynamics and your family relationships, you may have experienced a rebirthing of your relationship with your parents and in particular with your mother. Some of you may have actually been estranged from one or both of your parents and decided to give this relationship another shot. For some of you, if you were estranged from your biological parent or parents, this is if you were adopted, you may have reached out to them or they, have, they may have reached out to you over the last month. And some of you may even have heard from a child that you didn't know that you even had or perhaps if you did adopt out a child many, many years ago, you may have reached out to them over the last month. And on a totally different level, some of you may have been doing a lot of deep research into your family history, uh, your DNA, your cultural ro roots and your ancestral roots. And some of you may have actually unearthed some very important information with regard to your ancestral history. Now on the 13th of March, there will be a new moon in Pisces in your fifth house and it's at 23 degrees and it's actually in a very tight conjunction with Venus and Neptune. Given that Venus is involved in this, uh, this new moon, we want to look at what Venus rules in your chart. So it rules your seventh house, which is in Taurus, and it also rules your 12th house, which is in Libra. Now, this is for whole sign transits, okay? So, you know, regardless of what you have on your different cusp lines, just bear in mind that this is a whole sign horoscope. Now, with the new moon in Pisces, this indicates a new beginning or a new chapter in your life. And given that it's in your fifth house, this can impact you in the following ways. Some of you may actually fall pregnant, okay, especially if you have your moon in Scorpio and further still, if your Scorpio 
uh, sun, moon or rising fall between uh, 20 degrees and 26 degrees, this is definitely one to watch for you guys. Now, if it's not you falling uh, pregnant personally, because Venus rules your seventh house, which is your significant other, they may actually fall pregnant. Now, on a totally different level, some of you may be planting the seeds now over the next four weeks to start your own business. So the building blocks are being laid at the moment and you may see the culmination of this take place in about six months, that's when it could be ready to launch, or even 18 months from now. And this is definitely a business that you start, uh, that you create yourself, or you could actually create it with another uh, a business partner, given the ties to the seventh house. But this will either be something that you do solo or one on one. This won't be like a huge group dynamic. Now, for some of you, you may simply start a new creative project, which you're really passionate about. And if you already have children, this could be a brand new chapter in their life. Now, considering that Neptune is involved here, Neptune can represent unconditional love and it's the higher octave of Venus. So this is a very fertile and creative time for you, Scorpio. But on another note, Neptune can actually indicate having to let go of something or some kind of sacrifice. So if you are starting a new business, this may require you to let go of an old business. Some of you may actually be uh, embarking on a new romance, which I forgot to mention, but in order to do this, you may have to tie up things or tie up loose ends with your ex first, whether that's actually going through a divorce with them, and this will be something that you're currently in the works with, or some of you may just need to get over the previous person that you were with. Now, on another note, some of you may actually have to say goodbye to one creative pursuit in order to make room for this new hobby. And lastly, you may, if you're living abroad, okay, with the, the 12th house can represent living in a foreign country, you may actually have to relocate back home or leave the country that you are currently in. And that's in order to uh, embark on any of those new journeys, whether that's starting a family, building your own business, uh, leaving your country that you're currently residing in to uh, pursue a romance or a new creative project. Now, on the 16th of March, Mercury will enter the sign of Pisces. And again, this will be in your fifth house. So you will be thinking a lot about romance and having fun with your romantic partner. There might be a lot of flirtations and communications back and forth if you have a new romance in your life. If you are with your partner currently or not, you don't have to be in a relationship. You can certainly be single and thinking a lot about uh, having children. And, you know, you might be wanting to, uh, you know, look at how to go about adopting a child or having children without a partner. Now, some of you may simply be thinking a lot about if you're even happy in your life because the fifth house represents uh, how we experience joy and our happiness, okay? So some of you will be analyzing the ways in which you can allow for a little more joy into your life and perhaps even how you can introduce a bit more spice into your romantic life. Then on the 20th of March, the sun will enter Aries and this will be in your sixth house. So, th so this kicks off Aries season. And then just two days later, we have uh, Venus entering Aries, okay, on the 22nd of March. So with the sun and Venus being in your sixth house, you'll be focused on getting healthy. You'll be thinking about and actively pursuing getting fit, you know, you may be uh, you may be joining a gym at this time or working with a personal trainer or a fitness instructor. On a different level, some of you may just be interested in getting healthy. Perhaps you're trying a new diet. You might actually be going on a detox or just changing up your, uh, your lifestyle and your eating patterns in general. Some of you may try intermittent fasting. Some of you may try uh, try out being a vegan or being a vegetarian. Now the sixth house also rules work and your work environment. So with the sun here and Venus here, there can be a lot of 
attention and energy put into your current work life. And this could be work fixing uh, any problems that you have at work because the sun as an energy and as a planet is good at fixing problems and being quite strategic and ruthless. So if you notice that there's systems at work that aren't working, you may be going in and cutting this out or bringing some kind of creative new perspective to an issue at work. And some of you may be presenting ideas to your boss and these will be received well with the helping hand of Venus here. On a totally different level, some of you may actually be meeting some kind of romantic interest at work, all right? So with uh, Venus, wherever Venus transits, this is where love can enter our lives. So it might be a romance with your boss or with your superior or with your employee, all spicy. Now on the 27th of March, there will be a full moon in Libra and it is in your 12th house. It's at eight degrees. Now with the moon being in Libra opposite the sun in Aries, we actually see the sun in Aries being conjunct to Venus in your eighth house. And the moon is trining Mars, your ruling planet in Gemini, and it's also trining Saturn and Jupiter in your fourth house. Now, you don't need to know anything about uh, aspects and trines and conjunctions to listen to this horoscope because I'm going to explain how all of this can play out for you, Scorpio. So full moons always indicate the ending of a chapter or the ending of a cycle in some regard. So on one level, if you are living in another country, your stay abroad could be coming to a close at this time. Now this change to your living circumstances will actually have a positive impact on your psychological health because it's trining Mars in Gemini. And also with this trying to Saturn and Jupiter in your fourth house of home and family, your family are supporting you with this decision. In fact, your parents or your family could actually be helping you to make this transition more fluid and run more smoothly. For some of you, this could actually be the end of a psychological trauma that you experienced or even a subconscious fear which you've always battled and struggled with. Now, the reason that this uh, psychological trauma is now being laid to rest or, you know, you're reaching some kind of closure or seeing the completion of this issue, it's because you're doing the work, right? With Mars being in your eighth house and this beautiful trine, which is a harmonious and helpful aspect to your ruling planet in your eighth house, You've done the psychological work, you've seen therapists, or you've worked uh, on your own spiritual practice or occult practice, whether that's, you know, seeing an astrologer or studying your own astrological chart. Perhaps you've seen a Reiki master, perhaps you've done some energy work or energy healing on yourself, and you've managed to unearth why these psychological traumas have been causing you so much uh unease and you know mental anguish and certainly disturbed sleep patterns and any kind of mental health issues now for some of you you may have actually been able to uh, get rid of some kind of addiction you know some kind of substance abuse issue or some way in which you were using escapist methods and means to run from these psychological issues now you are you are confronting these head on and you're actually putting these to bed. Now, for some of you, if you spent time in isolation and that's isolation in any of the following ways, isolation itself, as in, you know, having agoraphobia or having a fear of crowds or being around other people. So self-imposed isolation, or perhaps you were in prison, perhaps you were in a rehabilitation facility. All of these uh, stints in, an, in a facility of isolation or self-imposed isolation can be coming to a close over the next four weeks once we have this full moon in Libra, because you've battled your inner demons, you've done the work, you've worked with 
uh, healthcare professionals or uh, people in the mental health industry, or you've done your own work on a very deep level and a psychological level, and you've made such tremendous progress, you've made leaps and bounds with your journey in this area. And now that you've come to terms with these underlying psychological issues and you've brought them out into the light, you are able to cope better in, uh, in situations where you're dealing with other people and you no longer need to be relying on other people to assist you or relying on any kind of institution to assist you with coping with you know these matters in simply everyday life. Now lastly, Scorpio, some of you may have achieved some kind of creative milestone and that could be uh, with regard to any kind of artwork, you know, photography, filmography, painting, digital art, perhaps you composed some kind of musical piece, uh, or even poetry or creative writing, you know, it really could be any kind of uh, creative artwork. And this could even extend as far as building a home abroad. That's the one of the other ways that that can play out. So Scorpio, that's all I have for you for March 2021. If you enjoyed this horoscope, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from me, please subscribe to K Astrology. And I've just published my tarot predictions for March 2021, so feel free to check those out. Well, Scorpio, enjoy March 2021, and I will see you next month.